welcome again today to my channel. If you're new, my name is Jasmine. I am a registered provisional psychologist. These are my credentials, just easier to point and put it up than say them sometimes. Basically, I like to talk about psychology and I like to talk about it in a way that is beneficial to you and understandable to everyone. So my whole point of my channel is just to bring the benefits of seeing a psychologist, but made available to everyone because not everyone has the time, the resources or the will to see a psychologist. But of course, this does not replace psychological treatment and always speak to your doctor. It's, I don't know your full story. It's just some advice and tips from me to you. Also, I provide online support to those who need it. The link is in the bio. It's very affordable as well. So today, what I'm going to give to you is my very best mental health tip. It is one tip. So it is one tip that I believe will improve your mental health. And the good news is it doesn't cost a thing and anyone can do it. So stay tuned so I can explain what it is and how it can work for you. Essentially, when people come and see a psychologist or when people are having mental health problems, they usually fall within this realm or these categories. So relationship problems, that's always a big one. So that can be anything from I'm having problems with my relationship, he or she is not paying enough attention to me, all the way up to more extreme cases of domestic violence or cheating. Then we also have problems with like work relationships too. That's always a big one. Then we all obviously have your mental illnesses. So that can be obviously say anxiety and that can be someone with high functioning anxiety that just needs something, a way to sort of release some of that energy within a therapy session. And then we have extreme forms of anxiety, which can be specific phobias. Then we have like depression and also just so you know like this this video isn't going to benefit somebody that has say schizophrenia or say schizotypal personality disorder and often like if you have like really heavy depression the tip is just going to help to alleviate some symptoms which for some people is more than they could ever wish for again please do not use my videos to replace the medication that you might be taking and therapeutic treatment that you might be engaging in as well. This video is for the everyday person who may have mental illnesses, but they're more high functioning. And it's for people who have experienced trauma and you may just be in a vicious cycle that you just can't seem to break. Basically, this tip is for people who are just not living their life to their full potential. They know that there's something wrong. They just can't put their finger on it. So what I'm going to suggest will hopefully work for you. You know, your life could be better. You could start to live to your full potential, connect with your authentic self, which is very important. And just deep down, if you know that life could be better for you, but you don't have the tools to make the change. So that's where this could come in for you. So here is my, here is my greatest tip for optimizing your mental health to help you to live a life that flourishes is the best for you and it doesn't cost anything and again anyone can do it so what is it it's accountability let me explain you need to be accountable for your own happiness what we often do is we look to other people to fill that need within us because one of the greatest problems that we all sort of face is that we rely on other people to make us feel worthy, to make us feel happy. We look to others for external validation when really we can only ever get that from ourselves. We can only ever get true happiness from ourselves. So if you keep looking to others for your happiness, you're not being accountable for your own happiness. And what actually happens is if you keep doing that, you end up people pleasing which is essentially just a way of trying to control other people's opinions of you. So when you're doing things, when you're bending over backwards for someone, are you being accountable for your own happiness? Is doing this for somebody else really benefiting me? 
do I think it's benefiting me because then they give me a smile and that makes me feel worthy? What happens when that smile goes? What happens when that person goes? What happens when I just don't have the energy to do everything that was required in order to get that smile from them? You just, you can't keep looking to others for happiness. You need to be accountable for your own happiness. Excuse me, I'm thirsty. The other thing is that we do also really need to be accountable for our own choices. Yours. God, oh, that is positioned. My desk is too small. So what I mean by that, I'll give you an example. Overeating. So if you're eating the wrong foods and too much of them, you're not being accountable for your health. And what are the consequences? The consequences are possibly shortened lifespan, being um, overweight, obese, possibly low self-esteem if that bothers you as well, diminished health and probably diminished ability to exercise as well. And just the impact of food on our mental well-being cannot be overstated. People with anxiety, for example, will often eat copious amounts of chocolate because the sugar in it will work with the hypothalamic, hypothalamic pituitary adrenal. Apologies if I didn't pronounce that correctly. It essentially neutralizes it for some time so you then have some reprieve from the anxiety but once it wears off the anxiety comes back even worse but that is just an example of how much what you eat can actually affect the chemicals within your mind and your emotional stability don't underestimate that you may make a choice not to be financially responsible as evidenced by perhaps buying a designer shirt that you can't afford on credit you weren't accountable for your finances and the impact is guilt, is shame, is being financially in debt and all of these things will impact your mood. Don't think that just because you bought that shirt and for that one fleeting moment you felt happiness that that's not going to come at a cost to you. So that's where you need to be accountable for your financial decisions and how that impacts your mental health. Now, extending this out to relationships, think about not being accountable here. What, what could that mean? So if you choose to ignore your advice from your friends, advice from your body, don't think that your body isn't screaming no when somebody is bad for you and when somebody is going to be violating you or your boundaries in some way so just um think about that like if you are not accountable for your romantic decisions and for the company that you keep what what are the possible um ramifications from such a disregard for personal accountability number one could be that you're exposed to trauma number two could be that you're exposed to People that really speak negatively about you, like how is that going to affect you? And what could the benefits of being accountable be? A benefit could be cutting out people in your life that are toxic and bad for you and how much better that's going to make you feel. A benefit can be picking the right romantic partner, not the partner that's right for your parents, that's right for your finances, that's right for your Instagram feed, but the person that is right for you, being accountable to you. That's the decision, that's the right romantic decision for you. Emotional reward and therefore reward for your mental health as well. Again, accountability can be seen in what choices you make through avoidance. So let's pretend that you have social anxiety and you decide that I'm not going to be accountable for my illness and I'm just going to hide away and stay in my room forever. And that might be great because you'll never have to deal with anything that's fearful, but you're also never going to enjoy the benefits of relationships with others, of getting outdoors, of enjoying a music festival, whatever that might be for you. So 
avoidance behaviors is again an example of not being accountable for a problem that we have and facing it because you can face it a choice to drink or smoke cigarettes or excessively smoke marijuana or what crystal meth whatever your poison may be but let's just focus on drinking because that's what everyone can pretty much access coming from my position of privilege that is what we all have access to providing we're over the age of 18 as well so your choice to drink is your choice but are you being accountable for your health are you being accountable for your pocket are you being accountable for your well-being now sometimes what we do is we listen to messages that keep us in our cycle of deniability which is the opposite of accountability that's deniability so denying to yourself that that man isn't bad for you that that friend isn't bad for you that buying things on credit card isn't bad for you it's all just denial so what we might do is look for messages that keep us in our cycle of denial so an example would be drinking alcohol is good for you and there's anti antioxidants in wine for example now I can assure you a glass of water is better for you than a glass of wine and for every glass of wine that you drink each day you increase your chance of breast cancer by 10% so please don't think that um, drinking wine drinking alcohol is good for you every time that you take accountability for your actions and that you move away from denial you are strengthening your accountability muscle so positive attributes courageous acts they are muscles that can be worked on willpower you can think of that as a muscle accountability is a muscle and every time that you say no and you make a conscious decision to be accountable for your own decisions your own mental health your own financial well-being emotional well-being you are strengthening the muscle of accountability and you are going to be able to have more control over your impulses and you're going to be able to be more of a responsible adult so now we know how to be accountable we know how to exit the cycle of denial and start to live our lives to the fullest and to be authentic to ourselves and to our needs what are some of the pitfalls what do we need to look out for number one thing i can think of is just because everyone else is doing it doesn't make it okay just because everyone else drinks every day doesn't make it excusable behavior an example for me personally that i can share um, would be at my age now and also also just from the influence of um, social media like we're getting exposed more and more to luxury goods so I thought you know what I've achieved my degree I've become a psychologist I should really treat myself I'm gonna buy a Chloe handbag so that's what I did and fortunately I'm in a I'm in a job position where we're faced with our conscience every day. So let me explain what I mean by that. I might be working with a woman who has just come out, escaped domestic violence. And what does that mean if I walk into the room with my Chloe handbag to this woman who has just escaped a really terrible situation with her children and the value of my handbag could change their lives. So when I, when I thought about it that way and I actually thought of using this bag in public, what message I was really saying to myself, to my psyche, how I'd really feel deep down. Like, cause trust me, like when I opened that bag up and saw that expensive handbag, I was like, oh my God, I'm not immune to that. We all have our, the things that sort of um, that appeal to us but when I actually put that in reality into perspective I just knew that I, it was wrong I just knew it was wrong but see I could work I might not be in another life I'm I might not be a psychologist I might work in a prestigious law firm for example 
And in the law firm, I might be faced with a lot of high earners and other women who aren't wearing a Chloe bag, they're actually rocking a Hermes. And in that situation, I would feel like my crappy Chloe bag, like it's not even good enough to be in the company of these beautiful Hermes handbags. And you can see how there's just, no matter what situation that you put me in, I'm never going to win. I'm never going to feel good about my purchase. So therefore, I'm just not being accountable for my mental health. I'm also not being accountable of the mental health of others because I'm perpetuating a narrative where women need to compete, where we need to have really expensive things to feel worthy. So I just, I just don't want to contribute to that. Basically with accountability, the one thing that you will realize as you keep exercising this muscle and you keep getting stronger and stronger, you will realize that you are your biggest problem, but you're also your solution to those problems. It is then that we start to realize that it is our decisions that have us trapped or living within whichever cycle of life you want to be in. So if you want to be stuck in a vicious cycle, then you're going to live in the state of denial. If you want to be in a cycle of life where you're your authentic self, where you're really just doing the right thing by you and the right thing by others, then you need to start being accountable. At the end of the day, it is our actions that are going to help us to escape. It is our actions that is going to have us living the life that we deserve. So I hope that my breaking down and unpacking of that beautiful word accountability can help you to see how just not having accountability can be so harmful and so we can be so irresponsible with our decisions, but they have ramifications. Every irresponsible decision you make, every impulse that you give into, there is a consequence to that. Same to be said, for every good decision that you make, there is going to be a positive impact from it. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I really look forward to seeing you next time. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Goodbye.